Hi, you're probably here because you want to make a top-down game. Whether it's a survivor's like, a shooter, or an RPG, this tutorial will be a good starting point. We'll go over controlling your character, spawning enemies that chase you, and taking damage when the enemy touches you. Start by creating a new Godot project. Create a 2D scene. Rename the node 2D to main. Press Ctrl S to save the scene, and call it main.tscene. Go up to Project on the top, then Project Settings, then look for Run, and change the main scene to the scene we just saved. Then in the Input map on the top, we want to create keybinds for W, A, S, and D. Type up in the text field and click Add. We want to assign this one to the key W. And then do the same by creating left, assigning it to A, down, assigning it to S, and right, assigning it to D. Now we can close this dialog and start working on our character controller. Right click on the main node in the scene and choose Add Child Node. Search for Character Body 2D. Character Body is the physics body that will control our player. We want to rename this node we just added to player. Then in the inspector on the right side, set motion mode to floating. Godot will apply gravity to your character body in certain situations. Setting it to floating tells it not to do that. Next, right click on the player and create a sprite 2D. Set the texture to icon.svg. Down in transform, change the scale to 0.5. Right click on the player, then select Add Child, and add a collision shape. On the right side, set the shape to Rectangle Shape 2D. Now we want to zoom in and resize this collider to about the size of the sprite. Hold Alt and grab one of these corners to resize the shape. Next, right click on the player and choose Attach Script. Name the script player.gd. The first thing we do in this script is define a constant that represents the movement speed of the player. You can think of physics process as being called every frame, but the physics process is called every physics frame, which is more reliable for moving objects and doing physics calls. Then the next line, get vector, takes all of the keybinds we made earlier, and it returns a vector with coordinates representing the direction that we're trying to move. Next, we check if we're pressing any WASD keys, and then if we are, we set the velocity to that direction at the speed of our movement speed. Then, if we're not pressing any keys, we call the next line to slow down to a stop over the next few frames. Move and Slide tells the engine to move the player based on the velocity that we're setting. Finally, go back to the 2D tab and move the player to the center of the screen. Now if you run the game, you can use WASD to move the player around. Next we want to create enemies. Press the plus on the top to create a new scene. Then use Ctrl S to save it and name it Enemy. We then want to rename that node to Enemy. Next, right click on the node. Select Change Type, and change it to a Character Body 2D. Just like the player, on the right side we want to change Motion Mode to Floating. Then right click on the enemy again, Add Child, and create a Sprite 2D. Set the texture to Icon.svg. Then down in Transform, change the scale to 0.25. The last thing we want to do here to make sure that it looks like an enemy is go down to visibility and change the modulate color to red. Now our enemy needs a collision shape. Right click on the enemy, add child, and choose collision shape 2D. On the right side, set its shape to rectangle shape 2D. And then just like we did with the player, we'll have to zoom in and hold alt to grab one of these corners and resize it to match the image. 
Now we want to right click on enemy and attach a script. The first line of this script stores the player so that we can keep track of its location. Then we define a constant for its speed. I chose to make enemies move at a third the speed as the player. The first line of our process function returns coordinates in the direction of the player. We multiply this by speed, and then that becomes the velocity. And similar to what we did with the player, we called move and slide to apply that velocity to the enemy. Next, so we can test our enemy and make sure it's working properly, go back to the main scene and drag in the enemy onto the main node. Now when we run the game, we should have an enemy that follows us around. Next, let's create an enemy spawner to spawn multiple enemies. We want to delete the enemy from the scene because we'll be spawning it in code from now on. Right click on the main scene, add a child, and this time we want a timer. Set the wait time to 3 seconds and enable auto start. What this timer will do is tell our script to spawn an enemy every 3 seconds. Let's create that script. Right click on the main node and choose attach script. Then go back to the timer. On the right side, under the node tab, you'll see signals. Look for the timeout signal and double click it to connect it. Now connect it to the main script we just created. The first thing we do in this new script is load the enemy scene and store it in the variable enemy. Then when we get the signal that the timer timed out, we instantiate the enemy and store that in the enemy instance. Finally, we add the enemy as a child of the main node to spawn it into the game. Now when we run the game, every three seconds we should have an enemy spawning in the top left corner. I don't like that though. I would like them to spawn in different places. To make this happen, we'll want to create a few different spawn points for the enemies to spawn from. We'll do this by right clicking on the main node and adding a node 2D. We want to rename this node to spawn point. Then on the right side, under the node tab, select groups and create a new group called spawn point. We want to duplicate this node. You can right click and choose duplicate, or you can press Ctrl D. I'm going to duplicate it three times so we have four spawn points. Then go to the 2D tab, choose each spawn point, and move them to different corners of the screen. This blue square represents the screen. Now let's add to our spawner so that it chooses a random spawn point each time. Go back to the main script. And on the top of the script here, we'll define the random number generator. Then inside the timeout function, we'll grab all of the spawn point nodes and choose a random one. Then when we spawn an enemy, we change its position to the position of the spawn point we chose. Now when we run the game, we'll see that enemies spawn in different corners each time. The last thing we want to add to our game is make it so that the game ends when the player gets touched by an enemy. Go back to the enemy scene and edit the enemy script. At the top we want to define a class name enemy. This will make it so we can identify whether an object is an enemy. Back to the main scene, right click on the player, add an area 2D, then right click on this area 2D we just created and add a collision. Set the collision shape to rectangle shape 2D. Then we want to resize it to be slightly bigger than the collision shape we already have. Now we want to attach the signal body entered to our player script. This is how we'll know if we come in contact with an enemy. Now in this new function, we close the game. When we run the game now, we can see that if we touch an enemy, our game ends. This will get you started with whatever kind of top-down game you want to make.
From here, you can start adding combat, interactable items, and an environment. I'm planning on turning this into a whole tutorial series. What kind of genre do you want to make? Let me know in the comments if you need any clarification, have any questions, and what kind of game you would want to see this turned into.